Hello. Well, I've bought something from an auction site. No, not eBay. Techbid, who specialise in audio and video equipment. So, uh, let's have a look and see what I've bought. I have one of these already, but I needed another one. Okay, any idea what it is? Well, it says component TPC frame store. So it's a time based corrector. But this one has some special features that make it particularly useful to me. So, what makes this special is what's going on at the back. So, as well as a normal S video in and a composite video in, which for some reason it describes as PAL in, this has dub in and that's crucial because that'll take a signal from a umatic video recorder via a dub cable and with the composite video in and also dropout compensator in which is the RF in that's the perfect setup for umatic because the color it takes from this input, the luma it takes from this, and they're separate in the same way as S-Video is separate. And then it can then process it with a digital time-based corrector. If there's a dropout on the tape, the signal from the RF connector falls and this will detect a low RF and can apply the digital dropout compensator. And then it can output YUV on these connectors here, which we can then go on to our capture system or S video to our capture system. So it gives the best possible performance for UMATIC. Now I already have one of these, so the simplest way for me to test this is to set it up in my studio downstairs and make the same connections on this as are presently made on my existing unit. First though I'll just power it up and make sure that uh, it's alive. We'll also connect it to a monitor. Okay uh, let's power it up and see what we get. First thing we uh, always notice on these things is it's got lots of very noisy fans. Right first thing let's go test. There we go we have colour bars, that's all working. Well, it's certainly not dead anyway. Just resetting everything back to zero on here. Do you want to see what's inside it before we uh, install it in my system? I see this screw is chewed, so that's a bad sign. Somebody's been in here before. From what I remember, there's a set of dip switches in here which will allow you to bypass a lot of the settings on the front and just retain a single operation mode. But it's not very convenient, you have to take the front off to get to them. Yes, there's the dip switches. Well, uh, there's plenty of dust. Yeah. Where did all that come from? What a sea of electronics. And there's another board beneath. So we have at least two layers of this. I think it may be even three. No, it's two layers. A very densely packed electronics from the late 1980s, I think, judging by this date code. Oh my goodness, I just realised what that silicon chip is there. <laughs> I may actually <laughs> have been involved in the manufacture of that chip. <laughs> oh, how likely is that? Good heavens. So in the days before PLAs, they used to use these um, ASICs 
where the customer would specify their circuitry uh, in a, a sea of gates type design. And um, we would uh, test them in the place I worked. We would write the test program. So I will look up the, uh, see if we can find anything else about that, the CLA3155. It's quite an old product. So dated 1988. That's fascinating. I will just uh, power it up again and make sure both of these fans are running because it does sound different to my other one. And I was right to check. That one is not running. Let's have a look at that fan. Oh, it's trying to run. Okay, let's see what the uh, voltage of that fan is. 12 volts. Maybe I could uh, squirt something in there to get it going for now. Do we use something as cheap and cheerful as WD-40? Oh, that seems to have got it running for now, noisily. OK, well it sounds a bit like I have an aircraft coming into land, but uh, that'll do for now. I'll have to order some, well, at least one if not two, new fans. Right, I already have one of these time-based correctors. It's there, and this one works fine. Let's just demonstrate that working now, and then I'll cable up the new one, and hopefully it'll work. Uh, and for this, I uh, do have my assistant. Hi. So first thing I'll do is just pop any old PAL tape into this player. That's routed through the uh, time-based corrector, and actually also through this uh, beta cam machine. Right, so we have colour bars, so I should have a picture from the pneumatic. There we go, we have a picture. Right, now uh, we'll stop that. We'll unhook all the cables from the back of this and connect it to the uh, other TBC. Let's give that a go. Well done, that'll do. Okay. okay. Uh, what you notice is it's quieter than the other one because one of the fans doesn't work. So that's why it can't stay here, because I'm going to have to um, change the fan. Right, so how I select the input, it's YC, it's one of these, we'll try it now. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's worked straight away, which implies that this machine probably was last used uh, with Umatic. I think there's too much chroma, so I'll set the chroma level down a bit. I found this one's got too much chroma as well. I could set that more scientifically later. Uh, we'll try a couple of functions. Let's do bypass, just gives an awful picture, test. You can select different test functions. and various silly effects like mosaic and things oh yes <laughs> like people really want that sort of rubbish but they used to use that a bit I suppose where's freeze frame excellent sepia I mean why would anybody want that yes A nice feature is you can set the chroma or luma noise reduction and I do find that handy sometimes for very noisy tapes. Right, that is working absolutely beautifully. I like that a lot. All we need to do is uh, replace the fan. So, unfortunately Alex, we're going to have to take this out again because I'm going to have to order a fan from somewhere and fit that. Let's take a moment to have a look at this uh, dub connector. So this is Umatic dub. And uh, the problem with this is it's very hard to get these cables. I dare say thousands of them were thrown away years ago. But now it's hard to get them and not even easy to make them. But uh, I do intend to do a video on how to make these cables at some point. Just looking at some of the controls on this. It's uh, fl flashing uh, HF, which means at the moment that the uh, Umatic tape is not running. Uh, so there's no signal on the... Um, 
RF connection. So uh, we'll first, which is used for dropout compensator. So we'll first put the pneumatic machine into play. That's lacing up. Okay, there's a, a blank bit of tape at the start here, so it's flashing various gibberish. But when the recording starts, that should uh, stop, and we'll just get whatever thing we have selected on here, which is black level at the moment. Okay, so we have uh, the tape playing. Obviously, if we set different functions here, they will appear on this, and we can adjust them. Right, moving across. So these are the proc amp settings, so we can alter phase um, uh, timing of the, the luma and uh, chroma relative to each other. And we can store those and recall them. Then moving across here, we have the input. So this is on pneumatic, uh, pneumatic uh, low band or high band? High band it is at the moment. Uh, so we have YC94 selected here. Uh, other inputs here, it says beta, which is obviously beta cam, SP, and M2. Uh, I actually have an M2 machine. Noise reduction, we can select uh, Luma noise reduction or Chroma noise reduction or both. We have these effects, which uh, I never use. Then uh, for the test modes, we can have uh, some test patterns. Here we can just do bypass and miss the whole machine out uh, test which gives us one of these and we can select different uh, test signals and then here we have uh, well if you remote control operate it and there's uh, external gen lock and crystal well that works well now I did mention earlier there's some dip switches under here so what I'm going to do is undo the screws on this front panel pop this off and you can have a look at those Let's clean this area up a bit. So this is display brightness. That um, preset seems a bit wonkily soldered. I think I've worked out what a lot of these uh, dip switches do. Some of them are concerned with the dropout compensator time delay. There's also black level uh, and some other settings here. I don't entirely know what they all are. And there's another one up here marked center C phase chroma phase. So these uh, really could have been placed better than behind the panel. And when I bought my other unit, all the screws here were missing, or I think one of them was fitted. Uh, clearly the front panel had been off a lot. People had been setting those manually. And when I first got it and the front was all wobbly, I thought, oh my goodness, it's uh, toast. But it was just because uh, someone had to get to those uh, settings. So uh, really they could have been placed a lot better. They could have been uh, at the back or somewhere like that. Or accessible through a panel, might have been nice. Let's put those six screws back. Now it's worth mentioning, this is not a uh, standards converter. It's strictly a time-based corrector. Uh, so the only input and output on here is PAL. It won't do any NTSC work at all. Now I mentioned earlier, and I may have made a mistake, I said that it takes the chroma signal from the composite video and the luma signal from dub. But looking at the uh, LEDs on the front there, giving you the uh, YC uh, uh, frequency values, I'm not sure that's entirely true. It may take the, uh, the chroma from here as well, but it does require this to be connected. And there's a mistake I made when I first fitted my first one. I thought, oh, you only need the dub port. And when I did that, I didn't get any color. So you need both dub and the composite. But then you get a proper uh, YC uh, signal into this thing. It's not like it's just taking uh, composite in and splitting it out. No, it, it uses the dub signal properly. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, looking at these. Uh, so it's the... Uh, DPS-375P by Digital Processing Systems and in my humble opinion it's the uh, best uh, digital time-based corrector possible for PAL pneumatic tapes. Uh, for NTSC it's unsuitable uh, so uh, if you were to look for an NTSC equivalent I dare say something similar exists but I don't know uh, what so perhaps if you could tell me 
If you know better, what would be a good solution for a, taking a dub signal from an NTSC UMATIC machine and converting that uh, to YUV or and or S video with a dropout compensator and full digital uh, time-based corrector? What would be your choice uh, if you're from USA and you know the suitable equipment for that? Uh, do please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Bye for now.